Let me tell you something about what happened in the courtroom today. Okay, yeah. Because today, for those who are watching this later on, NBA young, bit, young Boy was found not guilty on the first, I believe, of two federal cases regarding the weapons possession by a felon or whatever arrest. You, you can explain it better than me. Yeah. He was on trial in California, Central District Court of California, Los Angeles County, for being a felon in possession of a firearm. So he's got a prior felony, and under the federal laws, he's not allowed to have a firearm on him. Um, and what happened in that courtroom is what makes uh, courtroom drama is what makes being a lawyer so cool. Everything about being a lawyer is trash, except this. <laughs> this is the only part that's cool. I, I just tell you right now. Is, is seeing the suspense and, and the unfolding of the details at the end of this long process? It's the ability to persuade. Mm. The ability to take somebody who might think one thing, might think another thing, might think nothing, and get them to think your way. Right. And that's not going to happen in most areas, or it's not going to happen in a noble way in most areas. So in the context of criminal law, when we have a defendant whose literal freedom is on the line, your ability to persuade means something. Right. If you represent, uh, I don't know, let's take, for example, a corporation that's looking to lay off masses of employees and do it in the cheapest way possible and they want you to give them a little bit of a breakdown of how they can do it to pay people the least on their way out the door and you're gonna go use your persuasive skills to make that happen that's not useful and that's, that's the kind of stuff that you were doing previously no that was a hypothetical example. Okay. <laughs> but but that's the kind of stuff that <laughs> lawyers guy. end up having to do basically if you want to make yeah. a lot of money in this game one of the i mean you can put your skills to many uses right and so in the criminal context it's incredibly noble because you know regardless of what side you're on you are fulfilling the public service of hey man there's going to be crimes in our society and we're going to accuse people and we need a fucking system for that to all play out mm. and if you're a part of that system and you're a good part of it that's very respectable and that's what happened in this courtroom the lawyers went and they put on their case and there was 12 guys in a box 12 men and women in a box and they decided and I'll tell you something, they were a jury of NBA Young Boys peers. It was mm -hmm. Los Angeles County. I saw the folks who were part of the pool. I saw the folks who were picked. I was disappointed in the number of African Americans who were part of the juror pool. I tweeted about this. 8% of Los Angeles County is African American. You would expect about four to five or six of 50 potential jurors then to be African American. I couldn't tell simply by looking at the people in the room, right, Adam? I don't know if, right? right. But you guys know me, I'm a smart guy and I have some common sense and I could tell, hey, we have one black gentleman, we have one white gentleman. I saw the 50 people in that room, there was maybe one black potential juror. Wow. Wow. So, and there should have been more. And, and I, I, as a media problem, this is a problem that we have to fix, which is an awareness amongst everybody about jury duty and how important it is when you get that summons and that mm. notice to show up. Yet and still, I will say of the 12 people who were picked, the 50 overall Los Angeles County, those folks look like a representative jury of his peers. I don't know if this would have been the same in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, right. but I was very satisfied with. But they younger guys or what? Yeah, man, it was old people, it was young people, it looked like there was a good diversity um, and hearing people's occupations. There was, you know, professors and other people who were just doing like, you know, small odd jobs here and there. So it was a real good blend. So, but in that situation, when you're talking about the pool of potential jurors, is that the prosecution has already been able to sort of like sort through the potential jurors or they had already been able to like eliminate a bunch of people do you think they were going out of their way to eliminate black people because they thought they would be more sympathetic to young boy you know it, it's um it's the way it works is they send notices to everybody and then 50 people get sent into one courtroom where there's going to be a trial so out of those 50 now both sides have the ability to cross some people off the list right so the judge is going to ask they're going to come up in like groups of 10 or 15. The judge is going to ask them questions about, hey, is there any reason that you wouldn't be able to decide this case fairly? And I tweeted about this. My tweet wasn't actually complete because the real story is even better when I give you the full details of the tweet. Juror number seven. Juror number seven. So, so my tweet on juror number seven, it said that he, um, the judge asked him, hey, is there anything that's going to keep you from ruling fairly and he's like oh my tweet said i love yb i would decide in his favor but it was actually better than that he said some shit like oh i, I love yb i'm biased and the judge is like yeah we know you might know him but you could decide and you could look at the evidence and decide in his favor right and so this guy comes back and he's like 
no, no, no. I love YB. I don't care what the evidence says. I would rule for him. <laughs> wow. But if he was a real Young Boy fan and he really wanted to work on behalf of Young Boy, he would have kept that bias to himself and he would have got himself on the juror pool and he then would have voted to the voted not guilty regardless of what the evidence was in front of him, right? Yeah, there's the concept of jury nullification. And, you know, a lot of people were commenting, this dude fumbled the bag. He had one job. It's hard in the moment, right? He he might have, he might even regret it. He's like, man, I wish I didn't say that. But right. in the moment, he's looking at young boy in the trial. The judge asked him the question. He's not like preparing for this moment. He probably looked at the guy and said, man, right. in front of my my dude, I'm going to confess my love that, for him. But he might not have been a young boy fan because yeah. some people, when it, they, it comes up for jury time, they're like, oh, he I'm trying to get I'm out. I'm a white supremacist. I could not, you can't trust me yeah. I, just because he wants to get out of the jury duty, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. People always try to get out of jury duty. And that came up during the questioning. The judge was like, all right, everybody, I know you guys want to get out of jury duty, but please, let's stop it here. Yeah. But this dude was just, he was just a diehard YB fan. Okay. Hey. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe. We just hit 200K. We're trying to get to 300K. Turn us up. Appreciate y'all. Let's go.